Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you for starting recording, Stefania. Uh, and welcome everyone again. Uh, I'm super excited for today's community call because what you're going to see is not only the DMP and a new example of DMP template uh, with the you know tables incorporating different uh, elements, not only uh, questions uh, to provide uh, narrative answers. Uh, but also we are going to see the process leading to it uh, from a university perspective. Like last time we, we showed that from a funder's perspective. So today we're going to show that from a university perspective. And I'm happy to welcome uh, Sara Kovini from the University of Bologna. She's a data steward. She is going to uh, take that on her own today to present and demo a little bit of how uh, the uh, Argus template uh, for University of Bologna is, because uh, her colleague Julia Galdoni is uh, not feeling well, so she is excused, of course, <laughs> for this. But thank you very much for taking it all your shoulders, Sarah. Uh, I look forward to to hearing more from you. And I know what you've done, but uh, seeing it, you know, uh, in, in 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 the time and also and putting it in context is is always. Um, you know, uh, great. So without further ado, please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Ali, for the introduction and all also the possibility of being here and present our work with Arcos. Um, so I will start by sharing my screen so I can share the small presentation that I had uh, for today, I prepared for today. So yes, just one second. Um, Okay, so if you um, even possibly like don't see me or don't hear me well, just please say something and I will um, try to fix the problem. So um, yes, uh, I will start by saying, as Ali mentioned, uh, I will start like talking about a bit of uh, about the context. So the University of Bologna and uh, who am I and why uh, I am working uh, with uh, DMPs and in this case, uh, Argos for the development of a DMP uh, template for our university. Uh, then uh, we will see how, um, uh, let's say, uh, uh, where the need for a DMP, an institutional DMP, a DMP template started, uh, why we had the opportunity to uh, work with the Argos team, and how like the process of developing a template uh, built uh, in the, like, um, I, I would say last year. But uh, at, like in the second part of the presentation, we will see the template itself. So the structure, the contents, but also how it appears from like a technical perspective. So uh, the XML version of both the DMP template and the um, RDA JSON version of a test DMP, let's say toy DMP, um, according to uh, our institutional template, how they look like and uh, uh, how we can let's say, work with them. Uh, and then uh, at the end, uh, just some take home messages about like what were the advantages of these experience, the challenges, and also what are the new perspectives um, so I would like to start by like giving an overview on the University of Bologna um, because I think it does matter uh, on how we approach the development of uh, the DMP template. So it explains why we needed, uh, let's say, a template for, for all. Uh, because uh, the University of Bologna is a huge university in Italy. Uh, we have around 7,000 scholars, uh, considering researchers, uh, teachers, students, and so on. Uh, but also, most importantly, uh, we are a multi-campus university. Uh, so we have around 30 departments um, with a lot of uh, also so differences in disciplinary practices uh, and also uh, interdisciplinary projects and so on. So we had the need to um like 
we uh, by we i mean me and uh, the other three data stewards uh, currently working at the university of bologna we are a part uh, of uh, let's say group working group on open science and data management uh, we are working at the research uh, division research division sorry uh, so offices within let's say the, the central um, area of the administrative uh, offices of the university um, and we had the need when we started working at the university as data stewards we had the need to like reach a, a like very big community uh, academic community uh, composed by different people with different really different kinds of uh, data research practices um, type of projects also and research activities so we uh, started uh, thinking about uh, our support uh, has, um, let's say, individual support uh, from us with the researchers uh, acting as a single point of contact uh, for guidance on research data management matters. So for instance, uh, where to deposit data, how to choose the data that I want to deposit and store somewhere and so on. Uh, but we do also collaborate with other support offices because of course, um, problems related to data management also involves maybe uh, privacy office or legal offices for uh, commercial exploitation of outputs and so on. So having in mind this complex, uh, uh, let's say, framework, um, we had the need, uh, as I was um, anticipating, we had the need to uh, developing tools like um, let's say templates, of course, but also infographics, um, maps, uh, um, let's say tools in general to help researchers in dealing with their research activities and uh, proper to have a proper data management uh, practice. Um, so it, since uh, like uh, at the start of our work here at the University of Bologna, our support was mainly focused on helping researchers um, writing the DMP for founded projects. Uh, we had the need to support the whole community, even those uh, with which we do not uh, come into direct, uh, let's say, relationship. Uh, so we... Uh, we wanted to provide them with some sort of guide, something to start uh, to start with. Um, so yes, we started in uh, November uh, 2022 before getting to know Argos. Of course, we were just wandering around um, the internet to, to trying to understand uh, a bit more about existing DMP tools. Um, we wanted uh, some specific characteristics in the tool that um, we would like to adopt, let's say. Um, so um, I just listed here some of them, like most of them. Uh, I would just like to focus on the, um, the ones in bold because I think that they were the, the most important to us um, back then. So, but also right now, I would say. So the possibility for updates of the DMP, uh, allowing for version control, because uh, of course the DMP is a living document and can change uh, during the, the course of the um, research activity. Uh, we would also, we were like um, interested in collaboration mode uh, and also maybe review mode uh, because uh, of course uh, researchers work uh, in group so uh, maybe they would have liked to share their uh, DMP even if the, uh, the draft version. Um, then we also uh, looked for a uh, customizable uh, templates because uh, yes, we wanted to adopt a tool that um, had the, uh, let's say, um, most famous um, templates uh, for, uh, let's say, for instance, uh, of course, Horizon Europe uh, and Science Europe and so on. But we would also, um, we wanted also to have like um, customizable templates, like maybe to make shorter templates for uh, researchers that are not linked to founded projects, but would still like to do uh, a, DMP, a DMP for their research project.
So that was also a thing to we had in mind at the time. Um, then also maybe providing um, the private um, DMP version, having different export formats because maybe someone wants uh, to modify the DMP even after the finalization on the tool. Um, we were also really interested in uh, machine actionable DMP, of course, because like in line with fair principles, uh, we were looking for a something that was like, uh, of course, machine interoperable, um, machine actionable and so on. Um, and uh, we were also interested uh, still for interoperability um, reasons of tools linked with other tools and infra infrastructures such as, uh, of course, open air, because in uh, um, founded projects, um, it does uh, really a difference. Um, so uh, we uh, got the opportunity uh, to work uh, with Argos in developing our template because we participated in one of these community calls and uh, my colleague Julia, uh, who is also a data steward, uh, she won the um, let's say the possibility um, through like uh, a game probably, I wasn't there uh, back then, but yes, it was really nice to have the opportunity. And some of us, and I mean me and my other colleague Bianca, we also had like individual experiences during our um, research activity before uh, becoming data stewards uh, of working with Argos. So I already did some uh, DMPs um, uh, with Argos before. So that was the perfect, uh, the ideal scenario, I would say. Uh, also because uh, we found some relevant advantages uh, of Argos. Um, I bet you uh, I already talked about all of them, but I just wanted to go through them really quickly. Um, we were really interested in the key integrations, as I mentioned before, like with OpenAir and Zenodo, um, to like uh, smooth the process of research uh, data management and documentation uh, through the DMP. Uh, but also in having like, uh, we really liked the idea of having a frame DMP describing like the common information uh, for the whole project, but then having like single descriptions that data sets uh, within this frame. Um, then, of course, uh, the, the fact that it's based on OpenDMP. Um, and as I mentioned before, uh, the part on interoperability and technology, so the machine actionability and the, the use of standard semantics. Uh, me, especially, I am the data stewards for the uh, technological area. So I'm providing support to uh, basically um, research uh, researchers uh, in engineering uh, disciplines. Well, I was uh, really uh, interested in this part, more, more technical part. Um, so yes, and of course, the support from the team. We knew that we could uh, get in touch with someone if we had some kind of mm, problem, some kind of doubts, and that really was uh, uh, reassuring for us uh, to know that there is a team uh, that we can ask, uh, we can go to. Um, another thing that I think it's uh, really uh, crucial, I know that uh, it's it's uh, already, I think, really clear in uh, these calls, but I wanted to, to specify just like to, to understand how we worked uh, with the templates, um, is that, uh, of course, Argos consists of two main editors, uh, the frame one, as I mentioned, so the uh, DMP editor, which uh, works uh, with blueprints, and the uh, description editor for describing data sets and research outputs. Um, they are both, of course, uh, um, engaging with uh, semantic technologies. But I, I wanted to, uh, like, starting from this, uh, to um, explain that uh, we, as Unibo, uh, as the University of Bologna, we work both on the blueprint, so let's say the frame of the DMP, and the uh, description uh, template. 
Um, so starting from the blueprint of the DMP, um, I would say that um, it's basically uh, the Argos default template. Uh, we just asked if, if it was possible to um, uh, put as optional uh, the questions about uh, founders and uh, uh, grant, because uh, as I mentioned, we wanted to uh, spread this template also with researchers that um, maybe are not um, still working um, yet working with uh, founding um, founded projects uh, so also maybe uh, for instance doctoral students or just students that wanted to have some kind of TMP for their research. Um, so yes, this is basically, as you can see in the slide, the blueprint. So um, it's uh, you can choose it in the um, uh, start at the start of the development of your DMP. And uh, it basically contains the same information as the default template. Um, then, of course, the main work was done on the um, Unibo description template. So the template for describing the research outputs, the single um, research outputs. So, um, of course, the blueprint uh, is linked with the description template um, and vice versa, because if you uh, like select the uh, blueprint of the University of Bologna when doing like the DMP uh, frame, um, of the, yes, of your uh, DMP, uh, then um, the description template of the University of Bologna is automatically entered as a response to the description template field of the blueprint. So um, that is really nice also because we thought that maybe uh, researchers that are not acquainted with uh, Argos and maybe they are using it for the first time, uh, maybe they are still trying to understand why they have to choose two different templates. But I mean, if they are already linked between them, uh, I think it's more straightforward. So that is also really nice. Um, so yes, that was uh, the Unibo description template was the um, main, uh, let's say, main part of our work. And uh, it is also uh, the main uh, um, part of this presentation. So uh, that's what I will talk about in this presentation mostly. Um, I just want, before going uh, uh, like into the details of the structure and the contents of the um, description template of the University of Bologna, I just wanted to give you um, like a really simplified uh, timeline of what was the process. Uh, we started uh, last year with the first draft uh, of our template uh, according to the Science Europe template for the context, uh, but uh, the structure was um, modified by us data stewards um, to uh, have it, to have like a structure similar, more similar to the Horizon Europe Horizon Europe template we, uh, simply because uh, I think they are um, we thought they are the the most uh, common ones, uh, so it, it came naturally, I would say. Um, then we had some kind of revision and adjustments, uh, so feedback uh, by the Argus team, and then our implementation, or maybe uh, some questions from us to the team, uh, the support team, and then so we work together with um, like uh, iterative uh, adjustments. Um, then we had, like in the last part of the development of the template, a semantic integration. Um, um, I would, uh, I, I think that uh, if you are now developing a template that the semantic integration is already, uh, let's say, is already there. Uh, I would say that uh, it would be best to uh, put the semantic integration into um, the development of the template at the start of the process. Uh, but yes, uh, in our case, we did that last because uh, it was an integration like uh, coming coming out in that period. So we added last. And then we added the, let's say, the final template published in April, uh, so last month. Um, I, would, um, I wanted just to point out that the process took um, 
um, around one year, but just because uh, we had, uh, we as data stewards, I mean, at the University of Bologna, we had really busy periods uh, working with, of course, other projects and other acti activities of our uh, daily work. So uh, we did not have the time to uh, dedicate to this template that uh, we would have liked to have. So. Uh, that is also a thing to, to keep in mind. Probably if you have more time uh, in one specific period of the year, maybe you can have also um, a shorter process. But for us, it was a bit difficult. Um, so starting from the, um, let's say, structure and contents of our description template, uh, as I mentioned before, um, um, we uh, tried to uh, stick with the contents of the Science Europe template um, because they appear to us like more straightforward maybe than those uh, in the Horizon Europe, which some things are um, really uh, detailed. Uh, but we also uh, kept some similarities to the Horizon Europe template uh, because we uh, dedicated um, uh, a specific section on fair principles and so on. But we will see it in detail. I just wanted here to like provide you uh, an overview on the content. So uh, we, of course, considered um, the description of the data, both new data and reused data. Uh, we uh, thought uh, of um, um, asking them to document and provide the explanation on data quality. But there are also questions on storage and backup during the research process, uh, also ethical and legal requirements, co also considering codes of conduct. Um, finally, coming to long-term data sharing and preservation and the responsibility and costs of data management. So these are, uh, um, as you probably know, of course, the, the contents of the Science Europe template. But we um, arrange them uh, in a specific structure, uh, depending depending on our needs and how we intended the, the template to be. And this is the structure. So uh, we have five main sections. Uh, the first one are just uh, let's say, um, uh, contact information, administrative information about the creators and contributors uh, of the research output. Uh, but uh, still in section one, in question 1.3, um, you have to select the type of research output you want to describe. And the choice is between data set, software, and non-digital object. Um, so the second section, uh, the content, uh, the questions in the second section um, depend, they change uh, based on the answer you provide in section one about the type of research output you want to describe. But we will see also this in detail soon. Um, the third section is about the legal and ethical uh, implication, uh, let's say requirements uh, or focus points within your research project. Uh, the fourth question is uh, the description of strategies to make res a research result compliant with the FAIR principle. That is also, I think that is similar to the Horizon Europe template. And then finally, we have the description of quality assurance strategies and, um, um, sorry, uh, data integrity uh, through the whole uh, research activity. Um, I think um, I wanted to focus uh, here on uh, uh, what I think is maybe the, the the thing that is most mostly yes most different uh, from other templates and that is the thing that i was mentioning earlier of uh, distinguishing uh, the uh, research the types of research output you uh, want to describe the researcher might want to describe so um, we have uh, written uh, different questions 
for each type of research output um, and then depending on the choice you make in the first section you get different questions uh, which are specific to the type of object uh, or output research output you want to describe um, we had um, I, I mean the need uh, of having this kind of distinction uh, was made because um, as I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, the University of Bologna is a multi-campus and multidisciplinary um, university. Uh, so a lot of researchers uh, come to us, uh, especially researchers working in founded projects where they have to do the data management plan and describing data they work with. Many come to us uh, and tell us, I don't have any data. I don't work with data. I work with um, papers. I work with, uh, let's say, mathematical analysis. I work with... Um, I don't know, maybe more uh, theoretical um, inquiries. So it was, uh, or maybe also some uh, come to us and tell us, I don't work with data, I only develop software, as if software um, is not like uh, still a relevant output to value within your research activity. So we wanted to um, find a lexicon that was like that allow for the uh, recognition of these uh, disciplinary uh, differences and value and announce these uh, disciplinary differences uh, and value all the research project, uh, research output, sorry. Um, so yes. Um, we we wanted to to provide this kind of distinction. So these are the questions uh, organized uh, by the, um, uh, let's say research output. So um, that what you uh, these questions are the ones you get uh, when you are choosing one output uh, or the other. Even if some questions are similar in different uh, uh, research output sections, um, still the thing that changes is the description uh, of the question itself uh, because for each question you have the description and suggestions on uh, the the filling in of the of the template so we provided maybe different references different hints uh, on how to answer um, and so on I think that's that's my lead so um, coming uh, to uh, the uh, let's say for me, it was one of the, the most interesting part of this work. It's the semantic integration. And what I mean by that is the, um, let's say, the, the, the act of uh, adding semantics to the questions. Um, because when you, um, like when you are developing a template um, and you are putting your questions, um, it's best, of course, uh, for uh, from an in, um, interoperability interoperability point of view uh, to add also semantics. Um, Argos allows for uh, the add of semantics through the RDA DMP common standard which is uh, a standard, of course, providing uh, some kind of uh, uh, semantics uh, specific to the DMP uh, topics. So uh, in this example, I provided you here, um, you see on the left side of the slide, the uh, RDA DMP common standard, as you find it in the um, GitHub um, repository, uh, the GitHub page. Uh, and on the right side, you see how we put the, um, uh, let's say, the property within the semantics field uh, so that the answer to the question is linked to this specific property explained in the RDA standard. Uh, so it is really quite straightforward if you understand a bit about um, you know schema and standards uh, and so on because you just get you just have to put the the um, let's say the appropriate uh, property or class or whatever uh, within the um, the specific field uh, when writing the the question when developing the the template 
You can see also, of course, uh, the, uh, this semantic integration uh, within the XML version. Um, I provided you here um, an example from our, of course, uh, description template. So the description template of the University of Bologna. Uh, you see um, in the white uh, screenshot how you see it, um, let's say, through the tool. Uh, so like in the uh, user interface, but uh, of course the code that you see is the X XML version. Uh, so uh, the, the file that you can open um, when exporting the template uh, in this uh, format. Um, so you see has, uh, how the, there is a, perfect match, of course. Um, so the a correspondence um, of what you find in the user interface of the tool and what you can see in the XML version. For instance, here I um, I, I put the uh, a question from the section two, which is the summary, uh, summary description of the research output. So you can see uh, the element uh, uh, titled summary in the XML version. And then you see also all the elements referring to the specific uh, question, which is data set name. Uh, so you can see both the name of the question and the description of the question in both version. Um, and yes, you see also uh, the schematic tag, uh, which refers to the, uh, let's say, semantic integration. So the uh, property in the RDA uh, standard uh, that we linked to the question. Uh, so yes, pretty straightforward, I would say. So data set title, data set name, that was really easy to associate. Um, but you can also uh, see the um, the version, the uh, machine actionable version of the compiled DMP template. So um, here you can see a test uh, DMP, toy DMP uh, that we developed to. Um, uh, you know, to try the, the template and understand if everything uh, was working smoothly and correctly and if we want it uh, to be like that. So um, I drafted this uh, DMP semantics versus Unibo uh, template for the DMP. Uh, and uh, also I wrote to, uh, I see, let's say, developed two descriptions, uh, one for software and one for a data set. Uh, obviously fake uh, fake data set and fake software uh, but if you export the uh, DMP, the DMP sorry with the descriptions in the JSON format you can see that um, both the information concerning the frame DMP, so the blueprint information are there, and uh, uh, also information uh, regarding the descriptions, so the software and the data sets are also there, um, uh, nested and, uh, let's say, organized um, with their specific tag and uh, um, descriptions. So that was really also uh, was really nice to see how in different maybe uh, languages, different formats, uh, you can organize the content and having it also machine actionable. Um, so yes, I think I'm coming to the end of the presentation. Um, I would. I wanted just to sum up uh, with some uh, take-home messages. So advantages, benefits, challenges, and the new uh, prospects of the work. So the advantages were, um, of course, the effective support from the Argos team, uh, because if we had any doubt or question or issue, uh, we were um, uh, straight, we were really helped and. Um, 
supported, of course. Uh, but also uh, we are getting to know the tool and also sharing with, with some colleagues uh, for them to try it. Uh, we understood that um, uh, maybe at the start, if you don't know the tool, you have to get to know it and understand how it works. So for instance, the idea that you have a frame and then within that frame, you have the specific descriptions. Uh, but once you get the, uh, let's say, overview of the functionalities and how it's working, then it's really quick and easy to use. Uh, so that was uh, really, of course, a benefit. Uh, and then we really like the integrations with other platforms and technologies. I uh, haven't talked about it much uh, because, of course, uh, I know that uh, you already talked about it a lot, so I don't want to, to bore you. But I just wanted to say that it was really, um, let's say, interesting for us. It was really valuable for us uh, as data stewards, providing tools that uh, make life easier for uh, researchers. So. For for instance, instead of writing their name, they can just link their uh, ORCID um, account to the DMP and then having it deposited on Zenodo, then of course everything uh, is would be connected. Uh, and so that is really, let's say, something that we can um, value uh, and uh, yes, value to researchers, like trying to um, get them to understand the the true advantage of using an, a, a tool with such uh, integrations. So um, for what concerns challenges, um, I have to say that uh, I think a basic knowledge of semantic technologies and schemas, standards, uh, let's say, uh, is needed. Or maybe if you don't have it, uh, you have to maybe study a bit the, the schema used and how you can retrieve it uh, in the XML and JSON version. So just have a look at it and trying to understand to understand it to, I mean, to use it in the best way possible. Uh, so that would be a thing. But in our case, it was not really a problem because I am uh, um, acquainted with this kind of technologies. So for us, it was no problem, but talking with other researchers and colleagues, that was something that, uh, uh, came up. Um, another challenge, but I think that was uh, overcome, uh, was the, the, the need for an alignment uh, between the need of the data stewards, uh, the, um, let's say, the way the tool is structured, and also the need of the researchers, uh, that maybe they want a quick and easy tool to use. But we as data stewards, we wanted also a comprehensive uh, template. So uh, with a lot of questions specific to the research object. So it was, um, it was uh, not uh, really um, um, easy from the start to understand uh, how to align all these needs. But we, I think that um, eventually some, uh, we, we, um, we overcame this. Uh, but for um, uh, new perspective and prospects on the work, um, I think that we will mainly uh, focus on having case studies. So let's say uh, to test the uh, DMP template, the description template with real uh, researchers, because for now um, the tests have been only among, uh, let's say, administrative people trying the tool. Uh, and also maybe Maybe sometime soon uh, we will uh, uh, we would like to have an Italian version of it because of course um, some uh, some researchers uh, prefer to stick to the um, uh, Italian version of documents if they are not founded by let's say international uh, founding schemes. So uh, we will also think about that in the future. And yes, I think that's all uh, for the presentation. Um, I don't know if you have uh, any question, uh, if there are questions, or maybe if I can go on with the, like showing you a bit uh, the template. Um, 
Thanks, Sarah. Yes, let's let's go with a quick demo uh, and then we can take uh, questions. Yes. And discuss okay, questions. great. So let me uh, share my screen again uh, real quick. Mm -hmm. Yes, here. So, okay, I think you can see my browser. Um, yes. Okay. So this is my account. I will start a new uh, DMP uh, from the wizard. So um, putting like a title for the DMP, I have already tried some uh, titles, so, some, let's say, test uh, DMP. So for instance, maybe test DMP uh, with uh, the Unibo uh, templates. So uh, the description, of course, would be um, like, this is a, a test DMP for Unibo uh, researchers. Uh, and then you see, like in the third uh, straightforward question, you get to choose the blueprint. So as I mentioned before, uh, there is the DMP uh, default blueprint, which is the default for Argos, and there is the University of Bologna blueprint. Um, they are exactly the same. The only difference is that in the University of Bologna blueprint, uh, the quest some questions are not mandatory that's why when you like are editing uh, when you enter this uh, blueprint um, you see that um, everything is already let's say all required fields are already um, answered so you can from here uh, already skip to the uh, description templates uh, because you see the only required um, fields are the title and description we which we already provided a few seconds ago uh, the you can specify the researchers if there are other people from you of course um, developing the the dmp uh, but we wanted yes to the the, the language is the default language, um, and the contact person is, uh, of course, the, the person um, uh, developing the, the DMP, filling in uh, the, the template. But yes, we wanted to um, let the funding section um, not required because we um, also work with like doctoral students or students in general, uh, which are not funded, but still want to like have a roadmap to, to, to know what they would like to do with their data. So like a small DMP, like a really basic DMP. Um, and then uh, as I said in the presentation, uh, for what concerned the template of the description, um, it is automatically added the um, data management plan template for the University of Bologna. So the description template that I have talked about. So uh, even if the researcher maybe is new to the tool and is still trying to understand why they have to specify another template, it is already like pre-filled in by the tool. So that is really nice. So they can just go with it. And I think that's the best option. Um, so uh, if you if I save it, I, I am saving it now. And if you save it, uh, then you can directly add your description. Uh, so if I want to start my description uh, manually, uh, then here uh, I am uh, already in the um, template, the description template of the University of Bologna. So these are uh, already the questions that we have decided to put. So for instance, the title, so let's say um, test uh, description. Uh, this is a test description. Uh, I can choose the tag and then the uh, template. So of course, the um, uh, the one from the University of Bologna. And then you see uh, on the left side of my screen, maybe I can zoom out a bit, so maybe you can see the structure better. Uh, you see that these are all the questions of the sections that we uh, saw in the presentation. So the first section is mainly about the uh, research output of um, like the basic information like contact person, uh, the creators, contributors, uh, institution involved, and so on. But then in the last question, 
uh, not sorry. Yes, identifying the research output uh, is the last part of the first section where you uh, identify the type of output you are describing. So for instance, if I'm describing a software, then you see that the, 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 the part on the, the second section, this one, is changing. So that was really cool to see for the first time when we tried it. You see data set and also the question changes. So um, that is really interesting. Uh, so yes, for instance, software, I would need to identificate the software. So like if I am creating new, reusing, uh, which are the characteristics? So maybe the name, the type of software, the formats, and so on, like generally questions asked about uh, softwares. But as I mentioned before, maybe the questions might be similar to questions for other type of research out, uh, objects, um, but the descriptions are specific to the, the type of object. So maybe we still ask also for data set if the data set is either created, newly created or reused. But in this uh, um, description of the questions, we ask specific things about softwares uh, because we are in the software section. That's it, maybe. I think that's the main uh, thing. Uh, but yes, of course, then there is the ethics and legal aspects. Uh, that was the section three. Uh, section four is about making research fair. And this also partially depends on uh, uh, the type of object you selected. Because of course, if you select non-digital output, uh, maybe you won't need, of course, you won't need it to deposit it in some kind of repository, but you will have maybe more general questions about how you can make it fair, for instance, by documenting uh, the non-digital output. Um, so yes, uh, it's a quite long uh, template. Um, I, I know it, uh, but only a few questions are really required, uh, mandatory. So um, we wanted to give like expert uh, researchers the possibility of uh, providing specific information if they have them, uh, but um, if they don't, maybe if they are um, researchers uh, with little or no experience in data management, uh, then you can they can just skip most of the of the questions, uh, but still have maybe uh, some something to write. So um, um, I think that's it. Uh, I didn't want to take too much time, but if there is a section that you would like to focus on, I think maybe we can go back to it and see the specific question. Thank you, Sarah, thank you. Uh, maybe maybe we could also check the PDF, so how it uh, all, oh, yes, uh, sure. exports. Yes. Um, so yeah, yeah I really? was I was um, was forgetting about that, but I will um, get it now because I have it right here. Yes, but um, you are probably not seeing the the PDF right now, so I have to change no, no, the. Yeah, sorry. I will change the, the type. I will share the whole screen, uh, whatever. So that is easier. Okay. So I think that, yes, uh, the, the file is loading. I think you can see it now. Um, yes. So yes, uh, this was uh, the the example, the toy example that we uh, I show you in the um, the presentation. Uh, so it's really it's really basic. Uh, but uh, we wanted just to try how it um, let's say it will appear in the PDF version. So as you can see, the description is really short, and we uh, like made up a grant for this uh, this template. But these um, these are of course true data because I work with it with my colleague Julia, uh, who I mentioned before. Uh, so there, this is the like. Um, these are the blueprint information that you see in the first page. So like uh, a frame, a cover for the whole uh, DMP. 
so that it's really nice to see how the general information are translated in the cover of the uh, data management plan. Um, but then you have, of course, the main info about the uh, template, the founding, the license and the templates, more like uh, in detail as it is in the blueprint. Um, then here you start with the questions. So in, in third page, you start with the questions um, about, uh, let's say, the um, contact information uh, and the, yes, the description uh, of the output you intend on uh, um, putting in the DMP. So for instance, here I was the contact person. I put Julia as another contributor. Uh, then, of course, the institution involved was the uh, University of Bologna. Uh, we, uh, we pretended to not be linked to a specific project, so we do not have a, a work package to link the data set with. Uh, but yes, then we uh, selected the type of data. So in this case, we uh, pretended it was like the data set we wanted to describe. Uh, it was no new data set, but as you can see, the indentation. So you can get the structure of the question. Uh, like uh, second level, third level questions, and so on. So I think it's everything really like um, uh, tidy. <laughs> like it's really, it's really um, quite easy to understand uh, which are the questions and which are the um, answers. Uh, not really serious answers. Uh, I'm sorry. But uh, yes. No, I but thank you very it. much. I think this this is this is very very uh, good to see also how it acts like whatever uh, we saw before uh, translates to the PDF uh, that we get later. And I just say well, thank you very much for the presentation and the demo. But just to say that I uh, at first uh, I was so uh, positively surprised of how you use the tool because this Argos can you know have many possibilities and we have used it very um let's say yeah we were very moderate uh of using it at the beginning uh because uh, we wanted first to see how the community uh, reacts to certain things because you know we are very used to doing dmps a certain way and I was very positive surprised of seeing you incorporating the tables, uh, which are uh, themselves most inactionable and, you know, playing around with not only having one table, but many. So thank you. Thank you. I, I, I really like it. I really like how you use this, these functionalities. Um, I think we have a question from Kayala. Could you please share this document with us? Probably that was the export. Uh, yes, um, I was I was um, thinking the same. So if um, the question is referred to like the uh, PDF version, so the export of the test DMP, um, I will have to check because I think that some answers are really uh, like, um, it was a test DMP. So, okay. So um, I think that some answers are not like, uh, correct or um we um it was a test dmp from like oh, while we were still developing the tool so some mm -hmm. answers um i i would say that they um it's clear that we were still understanding some things so um uh, i wouldn't say uh, it's like a good example but we do have like a test dmp uh, unfinalized yet uh, which also act as an example for the for the uh, Unibo template, so maybe I can fin finalize that. Uh, I think it's on Julia account. I can finalize that and then uh, share uh, that PDF, which is more uh, like maybe complete, even if it's just a test. Uh, I think it's more like structured. Yeah, thank you so much. But before, even in the meantime. Uh, it's available, the uh, the blueprint and the template are available on argos.open.eu, so you can also explore how it works, like uh, check it out and then export it on text, PDF, or other um, formats. So if you don't need to wait, uh, also to check it yourself. 
Yes, indeed, you can just select the, the University of Bologna template and just trying it yourself if, you, if you're if you curious. Uh, um, of course, there are no specific questions. I forgot to mention it. There are no specific questions uh, concerning the University of Bologna. Uh, we just call it like that because we are the authors and we are from that institution. Mm. But uh, it was meant to be neutral, like for researchers also working, like maybe uh, researchers from the University of Bologna, but collaborating with other researchers from other institutions. So we wanted uh, something neutral that they could share uh, easily. So I think that it can be used by anyone if you would like to try. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Thank you. Uh, any questions, any other questions or thoughts maybe that influenced you if you are if you would like to, or if you're in the process of creating template, um, maybe some things that probably Sarah could uh, answer. If not, we are uh, right on time. I mean, we're one minute late, but <laughs> it's fine. I would like to thank you very much, Sarah, once again. Uh, thank you. And we will make the recording available, so uh, we, we will follow up with everyone. Um, yeah, Stefania, I don't know if you want to say anything. Uh, thank you very much, Sara. Uh, I, I, I'd like to make a comment. I was very happy to hear that that you find you you have researchers that are interested in uh, using a, a data management plan, not only for funded projects because usually people, I mean, researchers have to because they're forced <laughs> by, yes. by the, the yes. funding. But but these are useful for for young researchers. Uh, PhD students and uh, so this is very very interesting and uh, I mean that the, they see the value of, of uh, filling <laughs> yes for yes the... especially younger yeah. researchers uh, we are um, doing some training we as data stewards we are doing some trainings to uh, PhD students and we wanted the last day of the training to make it like more um, interactive so uh, we did like uh, as some sort of a workshop uh, uh, where we ask them, the students, to think about one data set that may, they may have to produce during their research activity and then to describe it in uh, like a template uh, in a DMP. Uh, but at that time, we did not have like the um, uh, Argos template. Uh, so we had to uh, like uh, take pieces from different templates and putting them in a like simple simple word version and then having it share with them but then they asked us if we had also like an interactive tool something that they could use for their research and they are not founded uh, by any institution so that was also i think an interesting like um Yes, use case uh, uh, for the the templates in general, and so we thought about them when developing the the template. Yes, in Argos. Yeah, that's a very precious work. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I hope so. <laughs> yes, it is. Okay, then uh, thank you very much, everybody. Uh, we will give you the link to the recording, the notes, and um, and and the, the 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 presentation if you wish to 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 share it, Sara. Yes, of course. And we will meet again next month. Uh, so enjoy the rest of your day, everybody, and thank you so much for joining, and thank you, Sara, for participating. Thank you yeah, very much, thank you so much for the opportunity. Bye. See you all next month. Bye.